Hi folks, welcome to another travel vlog. Today we are on our way to a coffee estate homestay in Mudigere in the Western Ghats. So the next couple of days are going to be interesting. It's going to be all about life in a coffee estate. There's going to be plenty of food around it. And of course, some of the other interesting things that we will explore along the way. So make sure you catch all the vlogs in this series because I think this is going to be an interesting coffee estate getaway. So the place that we headed to is called Chitaki Homestay and this is located in a village called Banakal in the Mudigere district. So it's roughly about 275 kilometers from Bengaluru. We've taken the usual route that we take towards Mangaluru. We got to Nelamangla, took a left on the Manglo Highway and now we're going to take a right at Hassan towards Belur, Mudigere and then find a way to Banakal. So I did some research on uh, Chitaki Homestay and the reviews looked very good. So this is a family run homestay in a working coffee estate. So it seemed like the sort of place where you could stay to get a good experience of what life in a coffee estate was all about. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to this break. We're there only for one night, two days. Ideally you should be staying there for two nights but work's so busy that I don't have the time to do that. But I'm hoping that we're able to make the most of our time there. So we've got some interesting meals planned, we've got some drives planned. The other reason why I also wanted to explore um, this place is that I haven't visited a coffee estate in a very long time. In fact, years ago when we began Gourmet Biker, which was a show that I did before Gourmet on the road, I did a trip to a place called uh, Harley Estate. In fact, there is a video on the Food Lovers TV channel. If you haven't caught that yet, you must definitely take a look. The other reason is also that I want to do some off-roading with the Jimny. So I've had the Jimny now for the last 3-4 months. My last major drive was to Yerkard and uh, we did a bunch of vlogs with the Jimny there. If you haven't caught those uh, vlogs yet, I'm going to place a link in the description below. We rode flat out on the highways, we took the twisties going up to Yerkard and on the way back we even took a route where there were no roads at all. So it was a lot of fun trying to test the capabilities of the Jimny. But the one thing that I haven't done yet is test its off-roading capabilities. You know, in extremely undulated surfaces to try and check out the articulation of the wheels, to use the four-wheel drive options, etc. And I'm told that in Chitaki Homestay, there are also some off-road trails that I can probably drive the Jimny in. So when I heard of that, that sealed the deal for this place and uh, so I'm really looking forward to the next couple of days at Chitaki Homestay in Barnacle. Busy there? Yeah? Oh, busy. Busy, busy Italy. Thank you very much. Well, typically when I'm traveling, I would have filmed a complete episode, a breakfast episode. But I'm not doing that because when the folks from Chitaki Homestay sent me the itinerary and also a menu of sorts, that menu looked very good. So I'm saving most of my appetite and also my energy for the time that we get there. So therefore, just a plate of humble, simple idli only. No vade to. The spicy, punchy chutney. Lovely sambar, South Canada sambar with that touch of bella. I think I need more of that chutney. Because the sambar is tasty, no doubt, but not the sort that has only a tad bit of sweetness. It is rather sweet. Munche, first to ide barte to. Iga last time libera the, la. Bengaluru na baru aga. So aga business na nimke ine ide aga ide ya. Chennai ide. Chennai ide. Super aga ide. Super aga ide. Jasti aga ide. Ah, fantastic. So I think if your food is good, people will come. Allah, thank you. Idli Allah chana gide. Coffee guda. 
so i guess if the uh, food remains up to mark people will come so it doesn't matter if 10 or 20 outlets have come between nelamangla and uh, mayura over the last few years but i think it still has its share of customers so there was a time when uh, we would come in a big group of motorcyclists and we would sit in the outdoor area so they had a garden setting there you could park the motorcycles there and uh, chit chat but where that garden restaurant was now they have a chowl tree a wedding hall that's come up so we miss that feel so when we ride we don't really come here too much because it doesn't have the same vibe very effortlessly doing 120 the only thing about doing 120 in this car is not anything else but the constant beeping the constant chiming that is unavoidable in cars these days so it chimes once at 80 chimes once at 100 and when you hit 120 it keeps beeping chiming constantly this is the first time today that i'm doing like a 120 at a steady trot just under 120 because i don't want it to chime so it's easily a car that keeps up with most other traffic that you'll see on the highway and you'll also be overtaking many of them and i think that's the kind of speed that uh, is practical on indian highways i think anything beyond that is asking for trouble so to those who say the jimni cannot really do 120 plus and you can't really keep up with others on the highway well that's a myth complete myth one right at the mosque okay you will get a sign board saying chitaki home state to your right okay look forward to seeing you okay bye Well there was a host from uh, Chitaki Homestay Mr Sharath inquiring if we were on our way and that they were getting ready for lunch I told him yes we're on our way and I'm looking forward to lunch when it comes to homestays well there are empty number of homestays but it's always important to look for a homestay that's actively managed by a family and you don't want a homestay that's too big which almost feels then like a commercial sort of a venture we've just taken a ride from Hassan Ring Road we are on route now towards Belur and then we will cross Mudgere and we'll take a left towards Banakal on route to Charmadi <laughs> Well we're in coffee country so I thought we'd take a break for a couple of minutes and take in this vibe of Mudigere's coffee estates which is just about 20 kilometers or 26 minutes from our destination You never tire of this view I think there's some arabica coffee there you've got these huge trees that probably go back decades some of them going hundreds of years and then pepper vines creeping their way up the one thing though i feel very bad about is wherever you stop on the highway in any part of the country you will find an obscene amount of litter so for instance right here you look above you've got this beautiful scene with the coffee estate the trees the pepper vines and all of that but look down and you will find plastic bottles tetra packs packs of wafers glass bottles and what not i think the one thing we need to learn is to value environments like these wouldn't it be nice if we were to stop and all that our eyes could gaze upon is the beautiful scenery of the estate I think as a rule when we travel on the highway we must have a little bin in the car. So when you have that juice when you have that cup of coffee when you break open that bag of chips once you're done with it keep that in that litter bag in the car and dispose it somewhere along the way at a suitable place instead of strewing it around all over the place it's really sad. Many a times we talk about other places other countries about how clean they are etc. but we fail to realize that they are clean because the people they keep them clean the people they don't litter maybe there are stringent laws but i think a lot of it has to do with people right it has to do with us nobody is going to do this for us so i think travel but we should make sure that wherever we go we keep things clean 
We wouldn't litter things all over the place at our homes, but why do the same outside? We just took a right at Barnakal and we're just about 4 kilometers, 4.8 kilometers away from Chitaki Homestay. Interestingly, it says Chitaki Homestay Chikmagluru, but Chikmagluru actual town is about 25 kilometers from here. So it was a good drive all in all. Uh, we left around 7.30 in the morning. It's about 2 o'clock now. Of course, when we drive, uh, you've got to add about an hour that gets used towards filming and things like that. The road may be narrow, but it's well tarred. Houses on either side, bougainvilleas, and of course, coffee all around. Well, the map says you've arrived at Chitaki Homestay. Chikmangluru, but there's a sign that says you're still one and a half kilometers away. It was an easy peasy sort of a drive, no stress at all. And uh, should I have gone straight? There was a fork on the road there at the left. Let me just check. Is there a boat there? I think it's further up. I wonder what Chitaki means. I'm sure there's a meaning to that word. I'm going to inquire with our hosts when we get there. Hello. Hello, hello. Ah, Mr. Sharad? Yeah, we saw a board saying one and a half kilometers and we went straight. Take that left, you see another board saying 300 meters. Oh no, we haven't seen that board yet. So there's another board. Stick to that road. Uh, stick to that, okay, Chitaki straight road. Street. Okay, I got it. Chitaki Homestay. Yes, yes, yes. All right, fine. One would have driven 275 kilometers, almost eyes closed, thanks to Google Maps. But the moment for a few kilometers, you don't have Google Maps you begin to wonder whether you're on the right path or not. I think Google Maps has become a bit of a crutch for us. We're in a comfort zone thanks to Google Maps. It's good every once in a while to break that. Oh, Chitaki is a bird. Chitaki homestay, nature in a cup. Mr. Sharad? Yeah, yeah, hi. Hi, hi Kripal. Hi, come, come. Namaskara. 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 Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, what does Chitaki mean? We've Initially. got a block of an estate, an estate over here which is named Chitaki Gundi. So we took that name to name the... So does it mean a bird or something? Yes, because it I saw a bird. Be a bird yeah. Could be a Chitaki also. Chitaki is a kind of bird like although there's no hummingbirds in India huh. it's a very small bird <laughs> nice and how big is this estate? it's around 117 acres 117 yeah, acres yeah. oh lovely very nice so this is like the dining come dining living area. area dining area and the other two rooms are down wonderful and this is like the view yeah so here, here you can go, there's a terrace here. Huh. So usually breakfast they have over here. And night usually they have no kind of... Oh, lovely. The estate goes right up till that house. Oh, okay. I can see the tree line. The tree line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where we will be going tomorrow. Oh, okay. Purely Arabica zone, but I've converted everything to Robusta. To Robusta. Uh, caffeine content is very high. Correct. It goes into instant coffees mostly. Yeah, it goes for uh, instant coffees mostly. Correct. But the funny thing is, ironically this year, Robusta has overtaken Arabica. First time ever in the history Pricing. of pricing. Arabica is around 300, that is 320. First time ever, it's you know. Yeah, it's gone. It's around 8,000 rupees of 50 kg bag. Oh, wow. <laughs> Can there some, uh, I think, like poly mango juice? What is this poly mango? Poly mango. Oh, very nice. This tastes like mango, tastes a bit like lime. Guinea muti in Canada. Guinea muti. Yeah, the one where they put salt and eat it. Correct. They also have a thin seed. Yes. But I like this uh, way you've done this space up here. Huh? So you. I love movies, man. Dad also loves movies. Ah, some classics: Shawshank Redemption, Cinema Paradiso. 
the birds. So you come here, you feel like you're in the estate, within the room, with this glass window, floor to ceiling glass window that you have here. So you have four rooms here? Four rooms. What I like here is that uh, all your rooms have a beautiful view of the estate. <laughs> you feel like you are living in a coffee estate. Very nicely done. The house was built in 1977. 77. So and the homestay you've had since? Three years. Three years. Like I told you one night when someone came and knocked on the door. They thought it was a homestay. It was around 10 o'clock at night. Huh. Then I told them uh, it's not a homestay but you can stay. Only two rooms were there at huh. all this wasn't there. Huh. I said you can stay here. So they stayed for three nights. So I, then I got that idea and then anywhere that was lying vacant, nobody uh, was coming there. Uh, and then I kept expanding the dining hall and okay. these two rooms I had it later. Wonderful. What I really like about this is the manner in which it integrates into the coffee estate. Many times when you go to some homestays, it may be a part of the estate, but when you are there, you feel like you're in a cottage or you're in a room somewhere. Here, wherever you are, whether you're in the room or whether you're in that living area, you feel that you are immersed in the estate experience. Plenty of chiku here, huh? the entire line is chiku. Because I've been late, huh. a lot of pepper has dropped and dried in the estate. Good thing with dropped pepper is it drops as a whole. Ah, uh, the entire bunch. The entire bunch. Ah. So we're not too worried if it's dropped. Just mm. a dry bit. It. This is the pick from the tree. You pick 100 kg green. You get 34%. You get 33 to 34% dried. Okay. But if I picked the same crop a month earlier, it would have come down to 28. Oh, okay. So you have to pick at the right time. Stage, they make it into a heap and they put water on top and then we close it. Water basically yeah, heats, heats up, up the, and that blackens, blackens the, pepper. the pepper. This green pepper becomes black, black pepper. Black. So what is the moisture here? 1.9. So is that good? That is the ideal keeping. You can keep the pepper, you can store it. So there's no risk of moisture being in the pepper and some fungal disease attacking the pepper. So this is ready yeah, now? This is ready now. When you to can, be used? When you, yeah, it can be used. I think all that talk of pepper has gotten me hungry. It's come, about come. 3 o'clock in yeah. the afternoon. <laughs> okay, and I think we're going to spend some more time yeah. talking with Mr. Sharath yeah. and his wife, yeah, Mrs. Yeah. Saumya, yeah. at yeah. lunch. Okay. Well, uh, if you didn't get an introduction earlier. I'm with Mr. Sharat and Sam Ms. Mrs. Saumya. <laughs> Thank you very much for having us over at Chitaki Homestay. Pleasure, pleasure to have you, sir. Uh, <laughs> chili chicken. Oh, chili, chili chicken. chicken. Who yeah. made this? Uh, Sharat made this. <laughs> oh, fantastic. And this is Wind mutton bush. fried. We ah. call it hurd mamsa in Kannada. Hurd mamsa, yeah. fried mutton. Fried mutton. It's ah. typical of a chikmanglo dish. Tomatoes, red Tomato chilies. Tomato and, uh, and onions. onions. No, no red chilies. Oh. Chili powder. Chili powder. Ah. Yeah. And this is, this, the, this is the mutton biryani. Yeah. This is the Muslim mutton biryani. So that's outsourced. That's outsourced. This is mul, uh, brinjal la palya, ah. mulgai palya. One vegetable dish. Ah, and, wonderful. Um, this is rasam. Lovely. Tomato chili Thank you. That's good. The chili chicken. This looks like a Andhra style Andhra, chili Andhra chicken. Style. Thank you very much. This is called the uh, Hurda mutton. Hurda yeah. Hurda mamsa. Yeah. Hurda mamsa. Hurda mamsa. Yeah. And of course, some vegetable just to balance things on our plate. Well, this is like a feast. <laughs> uh, you put the biryani first, but I won't taste this uh, <laughs> Hurda mamsa. Plenty of tomatoes, onions. And onions, yeah. There's also some fat that. Yeah, yeah, it gets mixed with the gravy. Oh, lovely. So, this is what, like a dish from around here? We are the Gouda community here. Yeah. Okay. So, it's a very typical dish. Good okay. mom says a <laughs> staple diet. Delicious. <laughs> Delicious. So, do you also eat pork? Yeah, we love pork. <laughs> Would you also make a similar dish in pork? No, my mother's from Koo. Okay. So, we make it the Kugi style. Oh, the, the okay. Dark pandi curry. With the kachan puli. We don't use kachan Ka puli. The karta masala. Yeah, the masala is there. Yeah. But the vinegar is the thing we call the atulli. And I think what really gives it that punch is the red chilli powder. It's homemade. 
we make a mixture of uh, red chili powder. Mm. That's also very typical of this. Uh, okay. So initially, I'm tasting a bit of that uh, pulpiness of the tomato, mm. and then of course the viscosity that comes from the onions Onion. and the fat that's rendered into that gashi. But then I think my lips are now beginning to say hello to the red chilli powder. <laughs> huh? So both of you take turns cooking. Evening uh, after work, I, I know it relaxes me cooking. Yeah. Uh, I come back in Sauros, my grandfather's, mm. so they say he was a good cook. Mm. My dad loved cooking, so I don't know, it runs in the family. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and this is what, this is sheep or? Yeah, sheep. Sheep, sheep. is what you no, use. Not I think next we should taste some of that chili chicken. So whose recipe is the chili chicken? He just <laughs> developed this uh, yeah. interest to cook huh. and then he just picked up this recipe. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Mm. Spicy? Not initially, but the meat, the chicken has soaked up the yeah. chilies rather well. Usually I put 25 chilies, I okay. put 19 green chilies. Do you also balance it with some capsicum? Sometimes we do, but I thought you wouldn't like it. So, so mm. a lot of people don't eat capsicum, so I thought. Very good. So this is what guests get when they... Yeah, yeah standard. Yeah. Mm. They don't get it all together. Oh. When they come, they'll get this biryani, they'll get the chilli chicken and uh, some more vegetables one maybe. Ah, okay. One vegetable more. So maybe. I've locked out and got one more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there are vegetarians too. So we ah. A lot of vegetarians there. There will be a mix of people. Now let's taste this biryani. So this is a local Banakal style biryani. Banakal, Banakal. Uh, Chikmangalur Muslim biryani. Chikmangalur Muslim biryani. Yeah. So this is similar to the Dhone biryani that you get? No, not the Dhone biryani. The Taj, you've gone to the Taj. Ah, no, I've not eaten the Taj. The Taj biryani. or the Maharaja. Okay, so that's the that, biryani. That, yeah, that's the biryani. All the Muslims make here. Yeah. Mm. Definitely getting the flavor of the fried onions. Do you also, also make your own biryani? We make our Yeah, and what is that biryani like? That's more palau type, the, ah. the military hotel one, the green palau. Mm. There's also plenty of the flavor that you're tasting from the tomato, a bit of that slight sweetness too that comes from tomato. Yeah, for, to mm. the meat. Mm. Does it take a lot of your time? Uh, on the weekends it does take a lot of time. Other mm. times I devote to the estate. So weekend is exclusively we have bookings and you meet a lot of interesting people and ah. that's, that's the fringe benefits. Along with the money which obviously helps. Wonderful. So the world comes by. The world comes by. We get people uh, from all over the world. Uh, we get a lot of people from India, a lot of different cultures, uh, different foods. Uh, it's nice. The moment I entered and I met you and I walked in here, I feel like this is an extension of your home. Yeah. I think many times now homestays have become very commercial. Yes, yes. Right? Yes, it's yes, just yes. a room and yeah, fine, you know, yeah. it's like you yeah. could be in any property anywhere, but you don't feel like you're in yeah. someone's home. Yeah. That's very, very important. Uh, it's plenty. a personal touch because we are involved. You're involved, that's yeah. correct. And I think that's the difference. Yes, yes. That makes a huge difference. So when the family is involved, when the host is involved, yeah. I think it changes the experience <laughs> uh, per se. Something which we enjoy. Also. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. I think I'm going to turn my attention back on this biryani and that. Uh, that's my favorite. Some, uh, something like a rogan gosh, uh, mm. the Kashmiri rogan gosh. They also have a sweetish tinge to it. Delicious. I think I'm going to help myself to one of the. I was eyeing that nalli. You got a bone marrow in your mouth. I don't need it. <laughs> That marrow has happily jumped into my mouth. <laughs> yeah. Delicious. This is a delicious dish. I just love the flavors. The manner in which the flavors have come together, yeah. whether it's the tomato, the onions, the chilies, the fat. It's coated yeah. your lip, your nalige. I'm sure this must be your favorite dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kids okay. generally don't like anything spicy, but when they start eating this, mm. they pick up that. Huh. And I think there's a having spicy food. Correct. And I think there's a good balance. So is there also some garam masala that goes into uh, this? We, yeah, we put uh, cloves, mm. cardamom and uh, in the oil. Lavanga, lavanga. In, in, the, in the oil and mm. garlic mm. and garlic. No ginger. We don't use no ginger. ginger. If you find yourself at Chitaki homestay, definitely request for the Hurd Mamsa. Hurd Mamsa. <laughs> uh, Mr. Sharad will be happy to oblige you. <laughs> mm. So good. This chutney is what? It is coconut onions. Mm. Super sugar could I there? Illa. Sweetness? Onion. Sweetness is onions. Onions, onions. Ah. And curds. Mm. Nice green chili there. Ah, green chili. <laughs> green chili. Sambar sappu. Sambar sappu. Very nice.
Well, some dessert to wrap up our lunch here. Mm. This is sabba ki paisa. If I'm not mistaken, there's also little shreds of carrot in this. The sort of dessert that your mom would prepare to coax you to try and eat those carrots, which is supposed to be good for you. I enjoyed my lunch thoroughly. The Chikmaglur Muslim style biryani was nice. But what hit the spot for me, in addition to the chili chicken, was the hurd mamsa. The mutton that's prepared by Mr. Sharat and Mrs. Soumya here. We've only been here for a couple of hours, but I can feel the genuine sincerity in the hospitality of the couple who run the place here. Of course, it's a very large estate, it's over 100 acres. But the homestay is a very small part of the entire universe here. There's only four rooms here, but those four rooms have been appointed beautifully well. It doesn't feel like a typical commercial homestay operation. I think the manner in which they've appointed the rooms, the bathroom, the linen, etc. It's the sort of arrangement that you would make for a very special guest who is visiting home. That's the feel that I get and I think what really blew me away was the view from the rooms. So whether you're in your bedroom or you're in the living room here or in the dining area, you're sitting here surrounded by the coffee estate. So I'm glad we are here and I'm looking forward to spending the next 24 hours soaking up various aspects of this estate. So that's it for this vlog. Stay tuned for the next part. I'm sure you'll enjoy that too.